Hi everyone, here's the Bookemist once again and today I'm reviewing a book I literally devoured over the course of two, maybe two and a half days, which is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen J. Fowler. We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves. We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves is a book I saw climbing the sale charts on websites like the Book Depository, Awesome Books, Amazon. Everybody was buying that book, everybody was loving that book. It became so popular and it stayed popular so long that I automatically discarded it as garbage because I am a terrible person and I'm horrible snobbish twat. Really, that's not something I do all the time, but the title combined with the cover combined with what little of the book I gathered from general reviews, I thought it was just yet another like young adult novel maybe about going to college for the first time, whatever. Actually, what made me interested in the book is that I saw that it won the Penn Faulkner Award, like last year, I think, and that's a big one. The Penn Faulkner Award is pretty much the most prestigious literary prize in the US, alongside, well, the Pulitzer, the National Book Award, maybe the National Book Critics Circle Award. And the Penn Faulkner, alongside, I'd say, the National Book Critics Circle, is the most literary one, the one that goes to books that are not necessarily, like, for everyone, but that are just great books. The National Book Award is sort of the same, like most years. Anyway, that made me think, oh my god, well, this book almost won the Booker Prize too, and I'm not that much into the Booker Prize, but it won such a prestigious prize. I don't think it's really a young adult novel, let's check it out. I didn't read anything more about the plot, I just read that Karen J. Fowler has written like genre novels in the past, fantasy novels, something like that, and that now she has won the Pen Faulkner. I was sold. That's exactly the kind of stuff I'm into, genre fiction that is ambitious and intelligent and literary in the best of ways. And We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves is exactly that. It's incredible, it's addictive, it's a wonderful book, and it's a wonderful book because Fowler uses the first person in the best way I've seen in, um, in many years, really, and because she is a slutty stripper. Well, okay, that came out wrong. Okay, let me explain that when there was a compliment, Jay Fowler is a amazing woman, I'm sure, <laughs> Mrs. Fowler, you're great, but let's talk about the first person. Some writers don't like the first person at all, first person narrations. Like, people like Jonathan Franzen once said that you should never write in the first person unless you feel really, really compelled to it, and that the third person is generally to be preferred. But Jonathan Franzen should probably reconsider the kind of books he writes. I'm reading Purity at the moment, and it sucks balls. What is indeed true is that sustaining a believable first-person narration for a whole novel is not something that comes especially easy to many writers, because sometimes the first-person narrator is just unbelievably omniscient or balanced as a narrator, sometimes the first-person narrator gets, in, gets close to the reader, like with uh, like smart and witty remarks, but the author overdoes that, overdoes that, and the whole thing like collapses under the weight of the supposed narrator's awesomeness. It's a complicated game, really. But the narrator here, the narrator in We're All Completely Beside Ourselves, it's genius, really. She is extremely compelling, you get very close to this person, at the same time she is extremely smart, she defamiliarizes a lot of things of the world and makes you think about them again in a very smart way. She is fun, but she is not like an idiot or a clown. She is fun in a, like, in a very genuine way. And throughout the whole book you never get tired of that kind of narration. It never gets pedantic if that is an English word. It's a word and it sort of means what I meant. Anyway, what makes this book even better, even greater, is what I was talking about before. Fowler is some kind of stripper, but being a stripper as a writer is an incredible thing. Every writer should be some kind of Lot. What I mean is that she knows exactly what portion of her novel's skin she is supposed to show you at a certain moment to keep you hooked, to get your attention, to start making you wonder what is hiding under the rest of her clothes, and then she reveals another part and then another part, and she does that in a way that makes you more and more excited to know more about the novel. Narratively speaking, this is a roller coaster, and it's amazing. It sort of reveals most of what this world in the book is about 
two or two thirds of the novel, but that doesn't mean that the ending is weak at all. The book is amazing from start to end, and I dare you read it in more than three days, because it's really, really addictive. You might be wondering what the book is about, and I don't like to talk about what books are about in terms of plot and setting and that kind of stuff, but I, I think that kind of stuff is the stuff that it's pleasant to know by yourself. Anyway, the book, I will just tell you, intertextualizes perfectly and beautifully with a short story by Franz Kafka called uh, A Report to an Academy. Yes, uh, and this is like maybe my favorite Kafka story. It's possibly the story that made me reconsider the whole of Kafka's production because it's quite enjoyable and quite understandable while being completely Kafkaesque from start to finish. If you don't know the story, do yourself a favor and don't look it up on the web. Read, we are all completely beside ourselves, and then read Kafka. If you do know the story already, just read the book, just read Fowler's book. That's it, I want to keep this short because I don't want to take away from you some time. You might be using buying or reading, we are all completely beside ourselves. Do it, it's amazing, good literature. Thank you so much for watching, guys. What did you think of this book if you have read it? Did you consider it some kind of cheap young adult novel like The Idiot That I Am? If you like, we are completely bizarre ourselves and you like the college element in it, the way the descri description of life at that specific age in the US, you might enjoy, I'm sure you would enjoy The Art of Fielding by Chad Arbuck, which is less imaginative in a way, but almost as awesome as We Are All Completely Without Ourselves, it's another college novel. I'm sure you would also enjoy The Marriage Plot by Jeffrey Eugenides, another college novel. These are all awesome books, do read them, they're great. Thank you for watching once again, I will see you in the next one, bye guys.